You can support Retro Recollections on Patreon, just like these wonderful folks. Thank you for your support. Hi everybody, welcome back. Today, I say it every week, but I'm very excited. <laughs> I've picked up an Acorn Electron. So, I have fond memories of the BBC Micro. It was a computer we had in, in school. In secondary school, I got to use it, use it quite a lot. I did a GCSE in computer studies using BBC Micros. We had a computer lab. We were lucky enough to have one of those with probably about 10, 15 my BBC Micros in the lab, all networked together. And uh, I learned to program a little bit and um, it's something I've got a lot of fond memories of. Now obviously this isn't a BBC Micro, but it is its poor relation, some people say, the Acon Electron, which was released as a sort of budget BBC Micro for the, for the home consumer. As you, as you probably know, BBC Micros were used in schools a lot in the UK and um, schools got a nice subsidy to a lot of the time to, to purchase them but if you wanted to buy them for yourself they did cost quite a bit of money so Acorn in their wisdom released a sort of cut down version of the machine which ended up as the Acorn Electron now it doesn't have a lot of the expansions and other other functions that a BBC Micro can do and it's a little bit slower and so and so forth but in general it's fairly similar fairly compatible so I thought let's start with the smaller one you know BBC micros are a little bit harder to pick up at a good price whereas I got quite a good price for this one and to be fair I was very pleased it came with a power supply an original power supply and it's in very good condition I've already unscrewed it to have a quick peek inside, but you can see here, yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit of muck on the key, so they're going to need a little bit of a clean. But as you'll see in a moment when you open it up, it's actually in very good condition. So the idea is going to be, we're going to give it a very, very minor cosmetic spruce up, and then we're going to see what we can do with it. So as you can see here, let's remove the lid, I've already removed the keyboard connector, but as you can see the machine is in pretty good condition, there's nothing there, there's a little bit of dust near the power supply there, the board itself is immaculate really for a machine this age, tiny bit of corrosion on the uh, modulator there and a bit of dust, but all I'm going to do for now is clean the keys give this a little bit of a brush out and go from there. So let's get on with that. I was surprised to find the inside of the machine was fairly clean. A little bit of dust has built up, but there's no signs of any issues whatsoever. The motherboard is lovely and clean. It's almost like the machine was hardly used for quite a long time. The keyboard looks to me to be a nice mechanical one with a proper PCB. Another thing to be impressed about, considering this was supposed to be a budget machine, Removing the actual keyboard from the top of the case will allow me to deal with the dirtiest part of the machine, which is the actual keys. I could tell from the outside that the keys themselves had quite a bit of grime on them, and considering their colour, it does show up quite a bit. So these will need to be removed and given a nice scrub.
It's always nice when keys are so easy to take off. No springs to deal with here and they just pop off very easily. Even the spacebar wasn't too much of a challenge. Look at this lovely aluminium shell that keyboard comes in. I'm very impressed. Give everything a little bit of a spray with IPA and a little bit of a scrub just to get the largest bits of grime off. I'm not looking for it to be perfect but just want to make sure that it's clean. Same goes for the case. Keys are all nice and clean now, so time to reassemble. keys are as much a pleasure to reinsert as they were to remove and within no time we have the keyboard all back together again. The keyboard ribbon is a pinned variety which is much easier to insert than the slot variety where you have to get the ribbon inserted correctly and even that was in very good condition. So yeah, I'm very impressed with the state of this machine. Let's screw it back together, only four screws. Simple, lovely design, very well made. I guess the saying is right, they don't make them like this anymore. And there we are, all ready to give it a power up test. Lo and behold, we have power and a working keyboard. Well, you know what I'm gonna say. I'm really happy <laughs> with this. Um, yeah, it's come out quite nice. It's looking very, very nice and clean. It was almost immaculate inside. No issues at all, a bit of dust. So I've been hardly used or very well looked after. And it works, obviously, as you saw, it boots up. Now I just need to figure out uh, the best way to load software onto it. I have um, purchased a cassette adapter cable as well. And uh, I'm gonna just looking at the easiest ways to do that. I know there's a website you can use to, to uh, load tapes onto that. And I wanna see if I'll, next video I'm gonna explore loading software onto here. I've also got a 
joystick adapter and joystick coming. It's one of the little small ones. I think it might be one that adapts it to an Atari style joystick. But I'm wanting to expand this if I can. I know there's various expansions you can get for this as well as modern upgrades, which I'm very interested in. So if you've got any advice, anything like that, uh, any suggestions, please leave them in the comments. I'm hoping to pick up a plus one at some point, but they can go for a, a few quid, so you never know, but I might get lucky, which will then allow me to have some uh, more expansions. I can have some cartridge ports uh, and various expansions at the back. But also I'm looking at a, a better solution than audio in sort of to, to load software as well. So possibly some sort of floppy solution or something like that or some sort of network I don't know I don't know enough yet about the machine so yeah thanks for watching stay tuned for a, a follow-up episode at some point if I can manage to get a few more bits and bobs for it and but we'll definitely have a look at some games soon whether I have to load them directly by the cassette port we shall see but yeah really happy brings back fond memories similarities with the BBC Micro, fond memories of school and coding games and playing games. And it's just a great machine. Um, I love the build of it, the, the keyboard is really nice, nice PCB keyboard and it's just a sturdy little machine. You know, it's not, yeah, it was a budget machine but it wasn't done on the cheap. It's nice strong plastic, the keyboard's got some nice aluminium um, frame to it and things like that so i'm really impressed with the insides of this so yeah thanks again check out the description for various links as well as various links to me and how you can get in touch or possibly support the channel if you so wish like my fantastic patrons are already doing and so until next time bye bye